I tried very hard to learn web development and land on to a job, but the reality was completely different. Not only did I fail in those interviews, I was unable to break the cycle of constantly revising Java, HTML, and CSS. Let's face it, the roadmap to web development job is not that simple as there are too many caveats to it. But only if there was a playbook out there, many people would be able to get that desired job, perhaps even their dream job. Today in this video, I'll give you a step-by-step -step roadmap to learning web development, where to start, what tech to choose, the sources and what strategy to take to become a web developer. If you wish to know whether web development is still relevant in 2025, stay till the end of the video. Let's dive in. Let's break down web development into two big parts, the front end and the back end. Think of a website like a movie. You have all the flashy stuff, the visuals, the actors, the music, the dramatic changes, even how it feels and looks when you watch the movie. You can take it to be the end product of the art of making a movie after spending years. It is what the viewer or consumer interacts with. That's all front end. But if you look behind the scenes, there are too many things that make it happen. If you did not know, as much as 1000 people are involved, the director orchestrates every person for bringing in their expertise in making the movie. The production houses provide funds and distribution, the screenwriters and scriptwriters write the story, the stuntsmen perform the stunts and so on. That's all back end. When you visit a website like Amazon or Instagram, what you see on the screen, the images, buttons, text, colors, animations and overall design, it's all front end. They make the website come to life and create the user experience. And just like the work behind the scenes in making a movie, the backend is responsible for everything that happens in the background to make sure the website runs smoothly. When you log into Instagram, the backend is handling your login credentials, checking your details in the database, and letting you access your account. When you buy something on Amazon, the backend handles the payment processing, stock checking, order confirmation, and more. Let's start with part one, the front-end technologies. To master the front-end, we need to break it out into three pieces. HTML, CSS, and Java. To understand what each does, let's take an example of a human body. In that context, HTML is the skeleton. It gives you the basic structure like where the heads, the arms, or the legs go. It defines the elements like headings, paragraphs, buttons, and images. CSS decides things like skin tone, hair color, and what clothes to wear. On a web page, CSS handles fonts, colors, spacing, layouts, and all the visual styling. JavaScript makes things interactive like how the brain and the muscles allow movement and reactions. JavaScript brings the page to life. It makes buttons clickable, animation smooth, and content dynamic. Now that you know why and what we need to learn, let's come to the how part. Think of this as your ultimate roadmap to web development. Plus, I'll throw in some frameworks you'll need once you master the basics. You may be told to learn these from W3 schools. While it is undoubtedly the most popular and common source where people go, I would not recommend it for two simple reasons. First, it lacks depth and good practices to follow. While W3 schools is easy to understand, it oversimplifies concepts and often lacks the depth needed for real world development. And number two, there is no interactive learning or community support. So let's understand three sources that I would recommend for HTML. Just to add, do not worry about the source links, I will add them all in the description. Number one, MDN Web Docs. It covers everything you need to know about HTML from the absolute basics the most advanced tags. Start from their HTML basics section, which introduces core concepts, move on to HTML forms, tables, and finally semantic HTML, which is super important for SEO and accessibility. Number two, free code camp. It is interactive, meaning you code while you learn. They have structured exercises that guide you step by step. As you would already know from my last video on learning how to code, the biggest challenge in our learning is when we read about coding and don't actually code. Free code camp takes away that challenge. And number three, Traversy Media. This is a YouTube channel which provides a crash course, just a one hour video for absolute beginners. Already 7 million people have watched this in the last few years. So whichever sources you choose to start with, I would suggest following the below path to ensure your learning is solid. Step one, learn basic tags and create a simple web page. Step two, learn about lists, tables and forms. Step three, explore semantic HTML which improves SEO. And step four, build a basic project, a personal portfolio web page. Now let's move to sources for CSS. Number one, MDN Web Docs. This is the best place for CSS documentation. It explains every property in depth. Start with CSS basics, then move on to Flexbox, Grid, and Responsive Design. Number two, Free Code Camp. This is an interactive guide. They take you through step-by-step -step exercises teaching real-world styling techniques. 
एंड नंबर थ्री ट्रैवर्सी मीडिया वंस अगेन परफेक्ट फॉर बिगनर्स टू लर्न थ्रू अ वीडियो ट्यूटोरियल दिस इज अ वन आर ट्वेंटी फाइव मिनट्स वीडियो दैट हैज बीन सीन बाई अबाउट फोर पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन पीपल Finally, a step-by-step learning path for CSS is as follows. Step one: Learn basic properties like colors, fonts, padding, and margin. Step two: Understand the box model which controls spacing. Step three: Learn flexbox and grid. Step four: Explore animations, transitions, and hover effects. And step five: Build a project, a responsive landing page or blog layout. Now, before we move on to Java, there is one additional step you need to understand and learn in CSS. It is frameworks. A CSS framework is a pre-written set of CSS rules and layouts. that help developers design websites faster and more efficiently imagine you're designing a house you could manually build everything from scratch that is mix your own cement cut your own wood alternatively you can use pre-made building materials buy pre-cut wood ready-made bricks to speed things up the second option is obviously faster more efficient and professional looking that's exactly what css frameworks do for web development here are the three css frameworks to pick from Number 1 Tailwind CSS or the Utility Powerhouse. Think of Tailwind like Lego blocks. You can build anything, but you have to put the pieces together yourself. The reason Tailwind is the best is because it's utility first. That is you directly apply classes to your HTML code. Only downside is that the code looks cluttered because of the classes. The best source to learn is the official Tailwind CSS docs which provides detailed guides, examples and a playground to test your code. Number 2 Bootstrap or the all purpose workhorse. Think of Bootstrap like IKEA furniture. It's ready-made, stylish, and fits almost anywhere. Just assemble and use. While the good part is its huge community and vast resources, which helps churn projects quickly. The downside is that website starts to look similar because it's so common. And number three, material UI. The Google look and feel. Just like Apple or Google's design system, it's sleek, consistent, and looks highly professional. Really out of the box. Both upside and downside about this is the Google material design which makes it elegant but limited. Now enough about CSS, let's move on to our third piece, sources for Java. Number 1, MDN web docs. It has the most detailed Java documentation out there. Start from JavaScript basics, then move on to DOM manipulation and events. Number 2, free code camp. Yet again, this course is interactive, so you write code while learning. It covers all the core concepts including ES6+ features. And number 3, YouTube video by Net Ninja. a super beginner friendly javascript video series there are 47 videos in this series i would suggest covering at least half of them here is a step by step learning path for javascript step 1 learn the basics variables loops functions and conditionals step 2 learn dom manipulation changing elements dynamically step 3 master events and functions handling button clicks mouse movements etc step 4 explore apis and async js fetching live data using fetch and async and step 5 build a project a to do list app weather app or interactive quiz similar to css java has its own frameworks that can help make you more productive and fast in executing projects instead of reloading the entire web page when something changes like a button click or new data it efficiently updates only the necessary parts using its virtual dom there are many popular java frameworks such as vue.js or angular js but i would recommend that you just focus on react js to expedite your learning curve It's widely used because it offers speed, flexibility and a greater developer experience. React has its own official documentation, do check it out. As you've learned HTML, CSS and JavaScript, it's time to apply those skills in real projects. My recommendation would be to build 3 projects of beginner, intermediate and advanced levels. The beginner project would look like a product landing page where one can choose product, has sections such as hero section, features, testimonials, pricing, and has a call to action with a simple contact form the intermediate project would be a to do list app with capability to add new tasks mark them as done or delete them the advanced project would be something like an expense tracker app with react js to create components like input form summary list material ui for styling cards buttons input fields and storing expenses using local storage or firebase note the above would not have a backend layer yet hence the final piece of a learning web development is understanding how to build backend but before we move there do know that a majority of web development jobs require either a front end or a back end developer but in case you are interested to know how back end works or interested to become a full stack developer hear me out from this point on part 2 back end development or the brain of the website this is where all the magic happens data is stored processed and sent back to the user think of it like ordering food online the front end is what you see the menu the buttons the cart the back end is what actually makes it work storing orders processing payments and updating the inventory i've broken this down into five major pieces which make up the back end layer that you must learn 
Number one, Node.js, the engine of backend development. Now there are multiple languages for backend, Python, PHP, Java. But to keep things simple, we'll again use JavaScript. Node.js lets us run JavaScript outside the browser on a server. How to learn Node.js? Start with the official Node.js documentation or watch Tavarzi Media's Node.js crash course on YouTube. Number two, Express.js, the backbone of your backend. Writing backend code from scratch every time seems too much work. Express.js makes it easier by handling things like creating APIs or application programming interfaces. Basically the connectors so that your front-end and back-end can talk to each other. Handling requests and responses, example when you log in, and managing routes, example different pages on a website. To learn this, check out Traversy Media's Express.js tutorial or follow the official Express.js documentation. Number 3 Databases, where everything gets stored. Imagine using Instagram and all your posts disappear every time you close the app. That would be a disaster, right? That's why we need a database to store everything. Usernames, posts, likes, comments. Now there are two main types of databases. SQL database. Think of them as organized spreadsheets. Example, MySQL, PostgreSQL. No SQL databases. Think of them as flexible storage systems. Example, MongoDB, Firebase. For beginners, MongoDB is the easiest to learn. It's no SQL, so you don't need to define strict tables like in MySQL. You can start with MongoDB University, which offers a free course, or watch Net Ninja's MongoDB crash course. Number four, connectors. That is interfacing back into database. So we have a database. How do we actually use it in our code? That's where Mongoose for MongoDB or Prisma for SQL databases comes in. Think of Mongoose or Prisma as a translator. Instead of writing complicated database commands, you just use simple code and they handle the rest. To understand how it works, check out the Mongoose official guide or watch Academy's Prisma tutorial. And lastly, user authentication, that is to let people log in. Instead of building login systems from scratch, use tools like Clerk or Firebase authentication. Clerk is a plug and play authentication system that handles login, sign up, password resets, everything. Or if you already use Firebase, Firebase Auth is a great choice. To learn, check out Clerk's official guide or Firebase's free courses. Backend development is where most beginners get stuck because there is so much to learn. But if you stick to this roadmap and take one step at a time, you'll get faster than 95% of the people. Now we have finally completed our web development learning trajectory. It's time to put it to test, which is nothing but building a full stack project. Let's go back to our advanced project of the expense tracker app. To make the expense tracker app fully functional, we need a backend that will handle user authentication that is sign up or login, expense data storage that is saving expenses in a database, CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete expenses, and security, protecting user data. Even if you achieve 50% with success, you can give yourself a pat on the back. As we come towards the end, I would highly recommend learning these skills in 2025 as the demand for web developers continues to rise with over 25% job growth projected for software and web development roles worldwide. It has become a high paying career with opportunities for freelancing and remote working. And that's it, you now have a clear roadmap to becoming a full stack web developer. But remember, web development is just one piece of the puzzle. Coding itself is a bigger game. If you want to level up even faster and understand the best way to learn coding from scratch, I've got another video breaking it down step by step. Check it out, keep building and drop a comment on what you're working on. I'd love to see your progress. See you in the next one.